first talk of the session. So this is Katarina. She's uh, at MIT. She's a student of the node. Uh, she's going to tell us about uh, super cool results in uh, uh, lattice problems in TFMP. Uh, thank you. Thanks for the invitation. So I am going to talk about PPP completeness and connections with cryptography and lattices. And uh, this talk is based on works with uh, Mika Ghosh, Pritis Kamas, Manol Zabetakis, and Yorgos Zizelis. So let's start uh, for, with a brief introduction on complexity. So this is the most classical picture of uh, complexity, where we have uh, NP and uh, P, and uh, a special class uh, in NP that we call NP complete, which are the hardest problems in NP. So in this talk, I will focus, instead of the decision problems, to the search the search version of these problems. And uh, the picture is, is still the same. We have the problems that are solved in polyn polynomial time. And F and P is the class of problems whose decision version is uh, NP complete. Okay. So instead of, uh, um, apart from uh, the problems that we know that either lie in uh, P or are NP complete, there are many other problems, such as graph isomorphism, finding Nash equilibria, etc., that we don't know whether they are polynomial time or whether they are NP-complete. And uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, cryptographic assumptions and lattice uh, problems that also lie in this space in between. So in order to, uh, to classify this problem, uh, yeah, uh, a new complexity landscape has been introduced. And uh, this complexity landscape, the main, uh, uh, the main class in this landscape is what we call TFNP. Which stands for, uh, which contains all total search problems. So, uh, total uh, totality means that uh, the problem, uh, a problem that it's total, always has a, has a solution. Okay. So, F and P is the class of uh, problems whose decision is in NP, and T F and P is the class of uh, search problems that always have a solution. And uh, since the introduction of uh, this uh, uh, complexity class, we have uh, some results that show that uh, this is probably different than uh, uh, NP. So if a problem is in TFNP, then, un then under -determinist um, it cannot be FNP complete under deterministic reduction unless NP is equal to co-NP. And for randomized reduction, we have a, a weaker result that says that if uh, this is the case, then SAT is checkable. And uh, it's a very interesting uh, problem to see whether we can get a result like that with a randomized reduction set of deterministic. What does checkable mean? Yeah, it's a, it's a weird assumption, yeah. It's not, uh, it's not as standard as this one. So let's see, how, what was the idea behind uh, totality? So <coughs> Papa Dimitri, when uh, he defined uh, the TFNP problems, he, uh, he tried to classify these uh, problems based on um, on the mathematical principle that is used to show their totality. So as we said, total problems are the ones where a solution exists. And uh, to, in order to show that a solution exists, we use a mathematical principle. So for example, it could be pigeonhole principle or parity, uh, which we'll uh, see later. And uh, the, uh, the problems are classified according to which of this principle is used. So using uh, this idea, he defined all of these classes, and, um, and uh, many other subclasses were introduced later. Um, these uh, subclasses have found many applications in uh, game theory, economics, optimization, and the most celebrated result is uh, that uh, finding an equilibrium is PPAD complete. And also they have found many applications in cryptography too. So um, a first question for these subclasses is whether we can find uh, natural complete problems for them. And um, in the, for this talk, natural will mean that uh, a problem does not contain a, a Turing machine or, or a circuit as part of the input. So let's see an example uh, of uh, this definition. So um, here is a problem. We are given uh, the description of a non-terministic Turing machine and an input M, X. And uh, the output should be the value of m of x. Okay, so this problem is by definition NP-complete. And uh, another problem that is uh, NP-complete through uh, due to Cook-Levin theorem is that it's SAT, right? And then uh, using SAT, we can find we can have many other NP-complete pro problems. So in this case, the first problem is non-natural because it has a non-deterministic Turing machine, whereas the second one is natural. 
the theory of the difference between natural and non-natural. So I'll talk about two results uh, that have to do with uh, finding uh, natural, yeah. Is this, uh, is this a subjective definition or it's yeah. actually formalized by uh, it, it is used in this area. I'm not sure what. It's, <laughs> it's not my definition. <laughs> Definition. Yeah, um, the definition says uh, that they, they shouldn't contain an explicit uh, description of a Turing machine in the input. So this is not like a technical definition. Yes, but we, we cannot really have a technical definition, right? Because SAT can describe Turing machines, right? <laughs> so and you can think of SAT as having a circuit in it, right? Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. Uh, so the, um, I'm going to talk about two problems, the uh, two works. The first one is uh, for identifying a complete problem for these two classes, PPP and weak PPP. And um, the connection that uh, this has to lattice-based uh, cryptography is that um, our complete problem looks, a, uh, looks like a generalization of SIS. And because of its, uh, its hardness for, for this class, we can get something about uh, collision resistant hash functions. And I'll explain it a bit later. And the second one has to do with um, uh, this class PPA. And um, again, uh, it has a connection with SIS because we saw that uh, for some uh, range of parameters, we can reduce SIS to a problem that is called Chevalet. So let's start with the first result uh, that uh, has to do with PPP and weak PPP. So as we said, um, these classes, um, each one of them describes a different mathematical principle. So these two classes have to do with a uh, uh, pigeonhole principle. Let's see the definition. So PPP, in PPP, the input is a circuit, and uh, we are looking either for a pre-match of zero or a collision. Okay. And the circuit has n inputs and n outputs. So we know that uh, either it is compressing, so there exists a, a, a collision, or it, it's a permutation, so we can find a pre-match of zero. Uh, that's why this problem is complete. And the uh, PPP contains all problems that are useful to this one. Uh, in uh, weak PPP, the circuit that we have as part of the input is compressing. So M is less than N. And in this case, we are looking for a collision. Um, these classes have uh, very strong connections with cryptography. In particular, weak PPP contains all collision resistant hash functions in the sense that if we can solve uh, weak PPP, is, if weak PPP is in P, then collision resistant cannot exist. And similarly, we have a connection between PPP and one way permutations. So let's see um, some connections that they have uh, with lattices. I'll start by showing a reduction to to PPP of, uh, from Mikowski, which uh, will be the problem that I'll define to PPP. And um, this is an easy reduction, but uh, I'll uh, it, it'll just show how this, uh, uh, this complexity classes work. So in uh, Mikowski, uh, the, uh, assume that we have a basis of a lattice B, and uh, the output should be a vector in the lattice with infinity norm that it's less than uh, that's to one over N. And uh, this problem we can call it all, so here might as well be infinity, but I'll stick with uh, the name Mikowski. Um, we show, and also in another work, uh, it is shown that uh, Mikowski is PPP, is in PPP. So let's see how this can be done. First, uh, uh, what we have to do is to create a circuit, a PPP circuit, and uh, then um, make sure that if uh, this circuit uh, returns either a pre-match of zero or a collision, then we can find a, a solution to Mikowski. So I'll, uh, I'll show you, uh, I'll show that how this works through an example. So assume that we have this 2D lattice um, that has a determinant eight. So we are looking for um, a, a vector that has a infinity norm less than square root eight. So it's in this uh, square. Okay. Our, we'll uh, construct this mapping that um, uh, maps points of this uh, rectangle, the, and in this rectangle there are nine points, to the parallelepiped of, uh, of the lattice that has eight points equal to the determinant. Okay. So how this, uh, this uh, mapping will work, it will just reduce these points modulo the parallelepiped. And let's see why this uh, reduces Minkowski to PPP. 
first, if we find a collision, then this means that we have two points that map to the same point uh, in, the, in the parallel pipette. And this means that their difference should be in the lat. Okay? In the other case, if we find a pre of zero, then this means directly that uh, this point is in the lattice. And uh, the only problem that, uh, that we haven't addressed is that we have a trivial solution. The zero maps to the zero. So uh, what we have to do is just remove, uh, remove it from the, the mapping. Okay. So now we have eight points and uh, the mapping is from eight points to eight points. So we can have a circuit like that. The only problem is that um, these points are not uh, really described with uh, 0, 1 to the n uh, as a 0, 1 to the n uh, uh, vector. Um, that's, uh, there, is a, there are some steps that are okay. We can uh, say that instead of 0, 1 to the n, we can be numbers from 1 to k. And uh, then we have to find um, a mapping that maps this 1 to k to, uh, to this uh, square, then use a mapping to the parallel pipette, and then Use a, different uh, use a different function to, maps, uh, to map these points to one up to k. And this is the only non-trivial part of the reduction. For this, we use the Smith normal form of uh, the basis B, but I'll, I won't uh, tell you more about that, okay? Any questions about the Mikowski? Yes, so let's see now why SIS is in PPP. So I'll uh, describe, um, SIS, because it is uh, connected with our complete problem, is, uh, is the first step to go to, to define our complete problem. So SIS has an input, a matrix A, that is in ZQ and has R rows and M columns. And we have this extra uh, condition that M has to be more than log Q times R. And the output should be a vector that is short in some sense such that AX is equal to zero mod Q. And we want to remove the trivial solution. In our case, we will consider the hardest version of SIS. So we consider infinity norm to be less than or equal to one. And this problem is equivalent to this formulation where we, have, uh, we are asking for two X and Ys, such that A of X is equal to A of Y mod Q. Let's see why, why this problem is total. The first step is to see how many uh, how many elements are in the domain. So since uh, we have, uh, a, since each one of them can take uh, values 0, 1 to the m, there are two to the m of them. And uh, the output is, um, uh, the image size is q to the r, because the matrix A has r uh, rows and each one of them can take uh, any of the q values, okay? And then uh, using this condition, we can, uh, we can see that the uh, domain size is more than the image size, so there must be a collision. This problem is total. And uh, it's easy to see that this problem is actually in uh, weak PPP by just describing the circuit as AX mod Q. Okay. So now we can, uh, uh, we can move on to um, our result that, uh, is, uh, that constrain SIS is weak PPP complete. So um, I'll just describe the weak PPP, but uh, we, we get a similar result for PPP too. Yeah? Mm, sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, how, how is it different from Minkowski? Because if you, if you take the M large enough, uh, then uh, the Minkowski bound would mean just one, uh, an infinity norm. Yeah, um, sorry. So if you take M large enough, then why? The Minkowski bound uh, for the hyperplatis the kernel of Q of uh, A would be one. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> you are trying to find vectors of norms smaller than one. So is it, isn't it a special case of? Uh, yeah. 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 It's PWPP, right? Which we don't get from Minkowski. Yeah. And also, it's uh, like a first step to for defining the other problem. Okay, so let's see how, how uh, the concern in SIS looks like. So we have uh, the matrix A that we have uh, in SIS too, but also we have an ext extra matrix G that has a special form that we call binary invertible. And then the output should be again an X at Y, uh, such that A of X is equal to A of Y mod Q. So this is the same of, uh, as SIS, but additionally we, have, uh, we need this uh, extra condition that, that G of X and G of Y are both equal to zero. 
And notice that these two conditions are different. So in the second case, we want that g of x is equal to 0 mod q and that g of y is equal to 0 mod q. So not only that they collide. So let's see first why this problem is total before showing that it's uh, weak PVP complete. And uh, we have to define what a binary invertible matrix is. So a binary invertible matrix looks like that. It has this form, it's an upper triangular matrix, and in the diagonal it has uh, these vector Gs that are powers of two, like one, two, four, up to Q. And uh, an example is uh, this matrix. So as, you, as we can see, this is uh, uh, below the diagonal, it's zero, then in the diagonal we have one, two, four, one, two, four, and then above the diagonal you can have any, any number mod Q. So a very important quantity in the, for this matrix is this, the, um, the number of columns that are after the G vectors, and this is equal to M minus D log Q. And uh, let's see why this is important, because we can uh, prove this lemma. So this lemma um, tell, is about finding uh, solutions in uh, the linear system of uh, G X equals to B mod Q. So it says that if we pick any B, and any z that fix any binary z that fix these last uh, these last uh, uh, elements of uh, x, then we can always extend it to a to a binary solution of this system. Yeah, and let's see the proof through an example. So assume that we have the previous matrix G, and in this case z is just one bit, so it's the last bit. We can fix it to say one, and then b to anything. Let's see how we can extend this to a binary solution of this, uh, of this system. First, we start with the, last, uh, with the last row of G. This has only three non-zero elements, so it, uh, it uh, involves these three variables. And as we can see from the definition of, uh, of the binary invertible, this has the powers of two, so one to four. So this gives us um, an equation that uh, the, the solutions are the binary decomposition of a number mod eight, basically. So we can so we can fill this with a binary with binary values, and then we can go to the next one. Again, we have the one to four. So again, we can find a binary solution and move on uh, up until we find uh, the solution to the system. And let's see how many solutions uh, we can find to a system. Since we have all of these variables that we can take any value in 0, 1 to the m minus d log q, the solutions are at least that many. So the domain of, the, of this problem, the domain size is uh, 2 to the m uh, minus d log q. And uh, the, the image size is again uh, q to the r with a similar argument to SIS. Yeah? of the domain of the problem as just consisting of x and y that already solved this? Yes, so I'm, uh, I'm picking this many and then I'm extending it using the lemma. I see. And so like because this is efficiently... Yes, yeah, exactly. I can efficiently recognize this domain, I can efficiently find elements in this domain, that's kosher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So the image size is q to the r. And then uh, using uh, the new condition that we have here where the D appears, the D is the number of rows in G and the, it appears here, the problem is total. And actually the problem, since uh, the only argument that we use to, uh, to show that is a pigeonhole argument, uh, pigeonhole principle argument, then uh, this problem is in uh, weak PPP2. So now let's see why it is uh, hard. So um, to show hardness, we have to show that we can, uh, um, by, that, by, that by, you, uh, by solving this problem, we can find collision in any, uh, in any compressing function. Okay. So this compressing function, we can describe it with, as a circuit that has n inputs and n minus one outputs. And this circuit, uh, we will call the input x and the output y. And we assume that this circuit contains only NAND gates. Okay, without loss of generality. Then uh, um, we will use a matrix G of our constraint SIS to describe the evaluation of the circuit. So um, G will make sure that uh, what we have here, what, uh, that it contains the input X and the output Y is actually an evaluation of this circuit, of the circuit C. And then we will use uh, the matrix A just to make sure that we have a collision for G so that um, uh, meaning that uh, the y's are equal in, two, in the two inputs. Okay. So let's see how we can uh, describe the evaluation of a circuit through uh, matrix G. 
Uh, oh yeah, and um, because it's easier, I'll, uh, I won't prove the result for zero, I'll just uh, prove it for two. And then uh, we can, uh, there, are, there are some other technical steps that we can uh, remove the two. So as we said, the, the circuit contains only NAND gates. So assume that we have a NAND gate with uh, inputs x1 and x2 and output y. See how we can describe it through a, a modular linear equation. So this, um, we have this equation that has x1 and x2 that are the inputs, y, and then an auxiliary variable. And as we can see from, uh, from this uh, table, the only zero one, the only, the only binary solutions of this uh, equation are the one that corresponds to, to y being the NAND of x1 and x2 and v being the XOR. So using this, we can describe, we can uh, define one uh, row of the matrix G. Okay. And then we can do the same thing for each, uh, um, for each gate of the circuit. So we can have uh, a whole matrix G. And what it's left to show is that this matrix C is, is actually binary invertible. So it has this uh, form of uh, upper triangular with one two, uh, one, two on the diagonal because we are just mod four here. And uh, from uh, the, the previous equation, we can see that it has this one too. And also by, uh, by observing that um, the circuit is actually a DAG, and we can um, use, uh, we can use this, um, uh, this special uh, uh, structure of a circuit to put the, the inputs on the bottom and the outputs on the uh, up, uh, upper side of uh, G to make sure that G is invertible. It's binary invertible. Then uh, now we can have the evaluation of the circuit described by a circuit uh, by the matrix G, and we have to make sure that uh, we have a collision using A. So A just says that. Um, uh, so you, we use A just to make sure that y1 should be equal to y2. Okay. So A can just be uh, identity in the part that we have y1 and zero everywhere, everywhere else. That makes sense? Okay. And now the only thing that it's left to show is that uh, we have this, uh, this condition. Now, I'm not going to, to describe it, but uh, this condition is guaranteed. So this problem is, uh, is an SI, uh, concerned SIS instance, and if we can find a collision to this problem, then we can find a collision to, any, to the circuit C. So this is weak uh, PPP complete. You have this very, yeah. very Mm -hmm. A, like, like, what's the benefit of describing the problem with a more general matrix A? Uh, like, it seems like you, you showed that an even easier problem yeah. is, is weak PPP complete. Yeah, the benefit is to show that uh, everything else is in, P is in weak PPP. Okay, okay, sure. Yeah. Actually, the benefit is to show the connection that it has to collision resistance has functions because with every, for every problem that is in weak PVP, we can uh, describe a collision resistant. And it is, in this case, using our problem, the concern SIS, we can describe this uh, collision resistant, uh, this has function that uh, we can uh, conjecture to be collision resistant. The input, uh, the key is uh, the matrix A, which now is random. And we know that all of these uh, instances are in weak PVP. And uh, binary invertible matrix C that uh, we can uh, sample by sampling the, the elements of, over the diagonal, basically. Okay. And then uh, to evaluate the collision resistance, we can have an input uh, of size uh, log cute VR, uh, and then um, use uh, the lemma to extend x to a solution of uh, gx equals to 0 mod q, and then just output a times x star x mod q. <coughs> So this is, a, uh, this is a hash function that looks a, l uh, a lot like the SIS hash function, but it also has a worst case guarantee that says that if uh, this hash function is easy, then no, colli no collision uh, resistant hash function can exist. So this is, yeah. this is not about worst case. Yes, it's worst case, yes, yes. But uh, it, um, by the examples to S SIS, it also has all the average case uh, all the, everything that we know for SIS also holds for this collision resistance. You're saying it's as hard as like SIS? Yeah, yes, because if we can find a solution to this one, then this is a solution to SIS too. With like slightly different parameters, 
parameters or something? Like yeah, what? m has to be more than uh, something that uh, depends on the, on the dimension of g. Any other question about that? Okay, so uh, I'll move on to the next uh, result, which is about um, this class, the PPA, which uh, contains all parity arguments. And uh, we again saw some uh, completeness, uh, some uh, completeness results for generalization of these classes that are for modulo p arguments. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to explain the result at all. I'll just show the, the connection that it has with uh, some versions of SIS. So let's see what is a parity argument. So um, the parity argument states that uh, if we have a odd number of uh, vertices and a matching on them, then there must be an isolated node. Okay? And we can generalize this to modulo, oh yeah, and it has many connections to topology because partial Coulomb is a PPA complete and uh, to fair division and computational geometry. And we gen can generalize this to a modulo P argument. Um, in this case, we, the, the principle is the following. Assume that we have a graph with a non-multiple of p number of vertices, and we have um, an, a p-dimensional matching. So assume that the, uh, this, in this case we have p equals t, and then we have the, these hyperedges. Then uh, this argument says that there must be at least one isolated node. And uh, we have shown uh, some similar results to the one with, uh, uh, as we have for PPA. In particular, we showed that uh, uh, a version that it's, um, it's a generalization of the borsch coulomb uh, theorem is uh, PPAP complete. And also that um, uh, some uh, results with uh, the, some problems in fair division are in PPAP. And it's a very interesting open problem whether they are actually PPAP complete. So now the problem, the, um, the landscape of uh, TFMP looks like that. We have PPA and that are distinct for, from PPAP. And uh, PPAD is on, in all of these classes. Okay, so um, the prob our complete problem and the connection with SIS has to do with a, a problem that's called Chevalet. In this problem, we have um, a modular system, a polynomial system uh, uh, F1 through Fn that have, each one of them has uh, m variables and we want to find a solution into the system modulo p. So the Chevalet warning theorem says that if the sum of degrees of these polynomials is less than the number of variables, then the number of solutions is zero mod p. And a special case, this is called the Chevalet warning condition. And the special case for this, uh, of this theorem is when uh, the constant terms of the polynomials are zero. In this case, we know that uh, the all zero solution is a trivial solution to the system of polynomials. So the Chevalet theorem says that there must be at least one non-zero solution. Okay. And this is what we define as the computational version of uh, Chevalet. Let's see what is the connection with uh, SIS. So I'll show a reduction from uh, actually a stronger, uh, a stronger problem than SIS that asks for binary solutions to a system AX equals to zero mod uh, P. So this uh, also gives us a reduction from SIS. But uh, in the case that uh, the parameters satisfy this condition, so we have N times P minus one is less than M and observe that uh, this is not uh, the usual range of parameters for SIS. So we want M to be linear in P. Okay. And obviously this gives us an SIS solution. So let's see how we can use uh, Chevalet to solve this problem. We define uh, this, uh, the polynomials one for each row of A as follows. These are the elements of the jth row. And then we have just x, xi to the p minus one. And from Fermat's little theorem, every solution to this, uh, to this uh, system of polynomials would be a zero one solution. So now we just have to count the, the degree of, uh, of f's. So, um, uh, each one of them has degree p minus one, and we have uh, n polynomials because uh, the number of rows of A are n. So from uh, this condition, we have that m, th that is the number of uh, variables, is more than n times p minus one. And hence from uh, Chevalet, this has to have at least one non-zero solution. So 
I'll conclude with a few open problems related to these uh, complexity classes and uh, cryptography and uh, lattices. So these are the things that we know now. So from PPP, we know that constraint SIS, uh, uh, these two things are equivalent. Uh, constraint SIS is PPP uh, complete. And also we know that Minkowski and uh, all the problems that are implied by, that are reducible to Minkowski are in PPP. So in this direction, uh, for lattices, an interesting uh, problem is what happens with the uh, square root 10 SVP. So this is the, um, uh, the factor of SVP that we know that it lies inside NP MP. So we don't know anything about, uh, so it's interesting to see if it actually lies in one of these classes and not just uh, NP MP. And uh, uh, also, not uh, for other classes, uh, not uh, PPP, it's interesting to see if, uh, for example, SIVP or any other lattice problem lies in one of the other classes. We don't know anything about that. Um, also, there are uh, many cryptographic open problems in uh, these directions. For example, this is what we know now. So we know some assumptions in PLS, in PPP, everything that uh, gives us uh, collision resistant on or one-way permutations. And then we have some special assumptions that uh, are inside CLS, like IO or repeated squaring. So it's uh, very interesting to see if, uh, for example, factoring or D-log or any other assumption is in these classes, especially the PPAD class. This, uh, this is considered a very, uh, very interesting open problem. And, uh, uh, this, uh, these uh, questions are about inclusion to classes. So let's see some open questions about hardness of uh, these classes. So it would be very interesting to show that uh, Minkowski is uh, PPP hard, um, which has been conjectured many times. Um, uh, and, uh, some other hardness results that would be interesting is to show whether, um, for example, square root 10 CVP, which is like a hard lattice problem, is uh, harder than one of these classes, maybe CLS or any other. CLS is considered the easiest one, that, so that, that's why I put it there. And uh, this would give us um, some implication to crypto too, because CLS, uh, as I said, contains some cryptographic assumptions. Of course, in this direction, the most interesting would be to have some hardness for SIVP, because this would directly give us some uh, hardness uh, for average case SIS. And, um, the most interesting class to show this would be the weak PPP that contains all collision resistant. Because in this case, uh, we, we could show that SIS is a universal collision resistant hash function. So uh, let me conclude with uh, uh, again with the open results. So the open uh, problems are in the intersection of TFNP and the lattice theory, or in TFNP and uh, other cryptographic assumptions. And also another direction that I haven't mentioned, but it's again very interesting, is whether we can build uh, cryptography, whether we can find uh, new cryptographic uh, primitives using TFMP and using uh, the, the structure of uh, TFMP problem. Thank you. Uh, do we have time for questions? Yeah. So uh, is the class PPP like closed under, uh, like if you can Turing reduce? No, PPP is the only one that it's not actually. PPA is and PPA D is. Okay, uh, I see. Because I, 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 I was gonna say about like factor N SVP, you mm -hmm. could reduce it to Hermit SVP. Uh, and um, which you call Minkowski. Yeah. Which, yeah. Yes, which you call Minkowski. Uh, but that doesn't help. Uh, in what sense it doesn't help? I think well, I... Because then you just said that, that the Turing reductions don't work. In but uh, oh, I think you're talking about this, right? Wait, so now I'm confused. I mean, it's not, yes, it's under Turing reductions, yes, that's true. But, so it's not formally in PPP, but uh, let's assume that it's fine. Yeah, so the interesting direction is the opposite. So something hard, like reduce uh, PPP to something, to a large problem. Okay. And for Mikowski, you showed uh, like a, a square, so like the L infinity norm, but yeah. uh, it still holds for like the L2 norm or yes. my favorite norm. Okay. Yeah, uh, the infinity norm is the hardest, right? 
and we are looking for inclusion, so. One question, so in the open front, you mentioned that mm -hmm. the cryptography, but how do you think Google is there? So cryptography usually you need the address, some form of uh, randomness, yeah. that's the charness. Uh, so would you hope, would you think, well, maybe possible to get uh, from TFMP? Um, so, first of all, the, uh, there are interesting problems in the other direction too. So, using cryptography to show average case hardness of these classes. And in particular, this is, part uh, this is very interesting for PPAD because this will show average case for NAS. Uh, but um, uh, you're asking whether we can have uh, um, a worst average case reduction for one of these problems, right? Or perhaps is there any problem that is believed to be hard on average in these classes? Uh, is there any candidate? Uh, Nash. Nash. Nash believed to be hard. Yeah. There are two different definitions of hard on average, right? There's, yeah. there's no polynomial time algorithm, and we think there's a reduction from some class to the average case problem. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> what you're asking for, right? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, a reduction from all collision-resistant hash functions, even in the worst case, uh, to an average case collision-resistant hash function. Yes, yes. Uh, right, which is like a lot stronger than just saying um, that the problem is hard on average, it's saying it's as hard as the whole class. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, yes, this, this is what we would get even from uh, something like that, right? This, if we had um, this, then this would say that SIS is at least, on average, is at least as hard as the whole class CLS and all the problems that CLS contains. And if you got PWPP, you'd be able to say, if your yes. hash function is secure, then mine's secure too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, any more questions? Let's thank Katarina again.